Hey, Navy Lock 5184 here, and welcome to another reaction to Star Wars The Clone Wars. We are watching Season 1, Episode 16, Hidden Enemy. If you are a new viewer, thank you so much for coming by and checking out the channel. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate all of you taking time out of your day uh, to watch this. If you enjoy the content, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video, comment on the video, anything that you think about it. I appreciate every bit of support y'all give and all those things help the channel out greatly. So I gotta say, I've really been enjoying doing this because I'm really understanding why so many people love the Clone Wars so much. The thing that I love the most about it isn't so much just the storytelling is great. Like really everything about the show is great, but what I really love about it is that it sucks me in so much that I forget that it's part of an already existing storyline that already has future plot. And it makes me very easily forget. And I know I've said this more than a few times, but even just the last episode that we saw Cat and Mouse, I'm sitting here like, how does Anakin get out of this mess? And yet I know somehow he's got to get out of this mess because he's got what, at least four other movies to be in, not to mention the episodes of Ahsoka he's in and everything. So it's like, obviously he's gonna survive this, but it's so good at sucking me in, I completely forget about that. And it's amazing how well they do this. And that is such a credit to the writers. And I gotta say, the people doing that voice acting on this are so cool. The thing that I also really like about this is kind of getting, well, I say like about it loosely because it's going to be something that really in the end breaks my heart, but seeing the, the clone troopers personalities and really starting to get attached to them to where you just don't see them as just, oh, they're just there. They're background characters. They're very central to the plot of everything. And you really just see the relationships that are built even within the troopers even, but then um, you know, in the episode Ambush, where Yoda was really taking the time to point out how each one was unique, seeing the relationship between Anakin and some of the troopers. It's just seeing all of that so far. And even Plo Koon and, you know, how he feels about them. Like, he does not feel they are expendable assets. You know, he values each one of their lives. And seeing that and just the few episodes that I've done already is setting up to make Order 66 that much more heartbreaking and I know that this is a point I have beat on so much but in all honesty I think that's the thing that is probably going to get me the most is because it's not really something you think about too much like when you see the surprise and the shock like in Revenge of the Sith, when the clones turn on their Jedi, this series is really starting to show you just why that caught them so off guard. And at the same time, that really kind of shows you just, I guess you could say out of touch, the Jedi has have gotten the fact that this is something that they could not fully sense. It's like they knew, it's like they felt something was up in a way, but you know, they just couldn't get it. But that's really just kind of shows you just how much of a puppet master Palpatine was because he had them so focused on this war and everything and had them so spread out to where, you know, by the time they did find out, there was nothing they could do about it. They didn't have the power. They didn't have the numbers. And, you know, I have a feeling that's something else that's really going to be shown here. It really just showing just how much of a puppet master Palpatine proved to really be throughout all of this. You know, and I'm very interested to see, because I know that in Revenge of the Sith, even Mace Windu, you know, and the rest of the council started to suspect something wasn't right with the Chancellor. So I'm curious to see if there's anything in this show that shows that. But enough of that. We're going to go ahead and get into this episode. Uh, oh, man. That's already like, made me lose my train of thought. So. As I said, we'll go ahead and get started with this episode. If you are interested in watching a full reaction to this, feel free to join my Patreon page. There is a seven day free trial. If you're interested in just taking a look, I'll have all my um, full watch alongs on there. You just have to have a copy of the show yourself, whether you have it on DVD or Disney Plus. Um, and I'll have a timer 
on the video as well so you know exactly where I am in the video. So let's go ahead and get started. We're set. I've got some guys here that are anxious to get going. Glad to hear it. The droids are advancing. Honestly, with what I have seen in this show so far, I'm not worried about those droids anymore. Something's gone wrong. Prepare all troops for- What the? Uh, I need an explanation on what's going on here. Obi-Wan, what's going on? We're cut off. The droids are on to us. We need an evac in the South Tower. Roger that, sir. We're coming. South Tower? We're in the North. Not for long. Rex, fire your cables. I still would like to know what happened. Blast them. Oh, come on. You could have at least given us a Wilhelm scream. This way is clear. How did you get over here? I improvised. That, that's what he does. Okay, I still got questions that need to be answered. Like, how did the droids get in there undetected? How did no one catch that? Kenobi didn't even catch that. Woo! Did he literally just take his head as a souvenir? Maybe this tactical droid will tell us how they knew our plan. Okay, no, it wasn't a souvenir. There is an actual tactical purpose behind it. How could we have left ourselves so vulnerable to a security breach? I don't think we did. Spy, sir. But who would want to betray our troops to the Sith? Excellent question, Commander. See, as much as I want to suspect Palpatine, he's been way... I feel like that'd be a little too sloppy for him. Someone left his comlink on. Someone into everything we said hey stop so much for the palpatine idea you take the west corridor i'm on it what the how we must have gone in the mess hall but how are you gonna know who it is we can't reach general kenobi Whoever it is has blocked our communications. We're gonna have to find this guy ourselves. If anybody can do it, it's Rex. Nobody's tried to stop us yet. Also true, they want us to get to the Separatist headquarters, which means this is a trap. I imagine it is. Well, that's unfortunate for them. <laughs> I can't tell what Obi-Wan feels about that. Irregular, see how it shows up every few days, then disappears? Day to day, you wouldn't notice it. The band's only coming off one terminal in a whole base. Slick's barracks. Only Slick's men would have access to that terminal. What? Yeah. Slick's not gonna like that. No, he's not. Oh, man, what a mess. And this is only technically the second episode. Huh. You'd think the Separatist headquarters would be better protected. You would think so, except they're We're waiting for you. Keeping us out is not what they intend. If it was any other two Jedi, I'd be a little worried. Ventress. And here I thought this mission would be unpleasant. I can't tell if he's being sarcastic or not. Where were you before you went to the mess, Chopper? I was hiding. I didn't want anyone to see me string these together. I always knew there was something deficient about you. Well, what does that mean? Isn't good, Chopper. Lying about where you were, taking forbidden items from a battlefield. Your whole character's in question here. Wait, no. Hang on. I'm no spy. He definitely... I don't think he would admit to something like that if he was. Plus, I'm pretty sure the person had hair. You don't have to say anything till the Jedi come back and talk to you. How did you know the Jedi were gone? Ooh! I wish you hadn't noticed that, sir. It's so... Nice. Wow! Oh. Slicks the traitor? Wow!
What the? There's no escape now, you piece of rank weed. Oh. Uh, run. Oh, no. No. Darn nabbit. Now what? I'm all yours, Obi-Wan. Oh, come on, you... You should have known better than that. What's the plan, Master? Bringing us here was a mistake, my sweet. Okay, I have a feeling there's a pass between these two. Poor Obi-Wan. You've been betrayed. And now we're about to take control of this world. Nah, I don't think you are. At least I hope. I hope not. Okay, what's the plan here? <laughs> hey there, slick. Guns empty. Nice. Funny. Traitor. Well done. You are. Okay, I would love to hear his reasoning behind that. I bet you sold out your brothers for some real shiny coin, huh? Oh! How could you do this to your brothers? I love my brothers. You're too blind mm -hmm. to see it. But I was striking a blow for all clones. Uh huh. You loved your brothers. You wouldn't have put them at risk. You betrayed every one of us. Take him to lock up. That is crazy. So now what happens to the planet? The fight goes on, gentlemen. Well, that was interesting. All right, y'all, that was Clone Wars Season 1, Episode 16, Hidden Enemy. And I tell you what, that was definitely... I don't think that was an episode I was ready for. I was talking about... I know I talked about getting to know the clone troopers more personally, but this one being a clone heavy, like it felt like that was a clone heavy story. I mean, talking about, you know, you had Slick, you know, who betrayed his brothers in the name of freedom for his brothers, which it doesn't make sense, but that's how the Sith work. I mean, you know, he's talking about his mistress and Ventress, who I already know through watching other episodes. Well, actually, I think I only saw one other episode with her in there. So knowing that she's Dooku's apprentice, but even with knowing that she had red sabers tells me that she's a sis. So we're, you know, that's how they get you. It's like they'll take, I guess you could say, tiny truths and twist them to make you believe something that's wrong, but think you're right. And honestly, it is amazing how easily some people can do that i mean you see it so much in power i mean that's the thing like especially and i hate to do this on this so i'm going to keep it very brief because i fully believe you know like especially towns like this are meant to stay away from real life problems but at the same time a show an episode like this really brings into social commentary where how many times do you see politicians no matter where you're at the one thing that they will use the most to try to get people on their side is to use people's fear. They'll figure out their fear and then they will feed on that fear and, you know, and that's how they get their power. And you see what that did here. You know, now it's not necessarily fear I think he's going off of, but it's almost the same principle. You know, going off something they feel so strongly for, you know, how this one clone, you know, just wanted 
the idea of freedom that he would betray you know people that you know risk their lives beside him risk their lives for him you know that he himself you know the way he sounds would risk his life for and yet he betrayed them just for this idea and it's crazy how the damage that that can do oh man you know it's one of those things where it makes you kind of realize why you know i guess you could say jedi try to be really cold and everything but at the same time and that's why i always say qui-gon is my favorite jedi because he wasn't afraid of the emotion or all that other stuff but he also knew that it had to be controlled but whereas the jedi themselves were just kind of like you know just do away with it all i will say this though and this was something that obviously i didn't catch with the episode ambush because obi-wan wasn't in it but i want i am really hoping that they go into the history of obi-wan kenobi and ventures because obviously there's some history there i want to know what this history is and but man uh going back to my original point about this not being an episode i was ready for because i was talking about how you know we're trying to get to know the clones personally and to see an episode like this i mean that was brutal that was brutal because again it just kind of goes to the idea of just they are more than just simple bit players they're very important in this war i mean look at the damage that one did i mean oh man that's so crazy so crazy man the show is something else i cannot wait to get to the next episode the way these shows just have me so much on edge is freaking ridiculous. And I love the fact that it, with the whole idea of a traitor being on there, naturally, like I said, my first thought was Palpatine, but at the same time, I'm like, he wouldn't be, like, I feel like, I'm not saying that Slick did a sloppy job, but based on, like, the power that Palpatine had and, you know, how much control he had, for him, that would have been sloppy. So, but yet, at the same time, it's kind of like, who? I never would have suspected a clone. Unless it was a plant. But an actual clone. Who would have thought? Man, that's crazy. That is so crazy. But just to go to show the greatness of this this series, man. I cannot wait for the next episode. It, it, ugh. I don't know what more I can say that I haven't already said. This is absolutely fantastic. Next one ought to be a killer. And if you are like, if you haven't already, feel free to check out some of my other reactions to Star Wars, Clone Wars, anything in that universe. And thank you all for stopping by. And I will catch you all in the next episode. <laughs>